Dual sport and adventure gear, like our motorcycles, has to perform in all sorts of conditions, terrains, and environments. Let's talk about the advantages of the ADV helmet and share some of my favorite choices for those of you looking to purchase your first, or maybe even your second, lid. Dual Sport and Adventure Gear is all about compromise. Dual Sport and Adventure motorcycles do a lot of things, but there are some things they don't do exceptionally well, and you can say the same about our helmets and other gear. Today we're just going to talk about helmets. I want to talk a little bit about why an ADV helmet is a thing and why you might want or need one to ride ADV or Dual Sport, and share some of my picks for the best sort of entry level and even sort of mid level second helmets for you new and newer ADV and dual sport riders out there. So, the versatility of these helmets, which are designed to take you from the highway to the gravel road to the muddy trail, back to the highway and all the way home, comes at a cost. And that cost is it's not great at any of the individual things, but it will do all of the things reasonably well. So, what do you want in an ADV helmet if you're looking for one? Uh, a lot of us like to have this peak on our ADV helmets, and the Peak does a few things for you. It is a sun visor, obviously. It can be used to protect your face from roost. If you are riding closely behind someone, or even not so closely behind someone that likes to send a lot of rocks and crap your way, I've been riding 50 feet behind people and had random rocks hit me. So it's nice to have a shield when you put your head down. And the other thing it can do, and the thing I probably use it most for, is when you're crashing through the brush, and branches are whipping you in the face, you can lower your head like this, and you see how that peak protects you, and protects your face mask, and protects your naked face if you're running with goggles, which is another advantage of these helmets. They have a nice wide eye port, which makes it easier to add a pair of goggles inside the helmet while you're wearing it. Many of them, like this MX-9 here, actually leave enough space between the shield and the helmet so that you can close your helmet on top of your goggles. So if you're riding in the woods with goggles and you get out and you've got a, a highway section that's connecting it to another trail or whatever, you just pop that shield down. Once you're back, you flip it back up. But why do we wear goggles in the first place? What's the point? What's the advantage? Well, when we ride dual sport and ADV off-road, it tends to be at slower speeds, at least some, if not most of the time, depending on where you're riding. If you're out trail riding, you're not going to be hitting 50, 60 miles an hour like you are on the highway, and on a hot day, the airflow is going to be a lot less. Flipping that shield up, wearing a pair of goggles that let air flow into your helmet is much, much more comfortable. Some ADV helmets, like the AT950 here, have a drop-down sun visor, built-in sunglasses, built-in Top Gun Maverick mode. You can go from, uh, from rad to dad in about three seconds with these bad boys. So if that's something you're interested in, keep an eye out for that feature. You also want to find a helmet that is pin lock ready. A pin lock is a sort of insulated shield that goes inside your visor. You can see I've actually got one here on the Creos. And what it does is it, it traps a pocket of air that keeps that part of your lens from fogging up. So you can see when you're breathing warm air on the inside of your helmet and there's cold air outside whipping across it. So you don't get a bunch of fogging, or you get less fogging. They're not fog proof, I wish they were, but it definitely reduces the fog. And when we ride dual sport, we ride in all kinds of conditions. So you're gonna occasionally get caught in the rain or the cold or, or start early. We ride long days on our adventure rides. So you may be riding early in the morning or into the evening when it's cooler. And so it's nice to have that anti-fog feature. So I would encourage you to look for a pin lock ready helmet. The way you can tell is the helmets have these little studs that you attach the pin lock to. You can usually see them on the outside of the helmet or most of the marketing branding the box will say pin lock ready. So that's an important thing to look for. Some helmets will also come with a tinted visor, which is nice to have to swap in and out, but I don't advise wearing it all day because when you get into like the shaded areas, even on a super sunny day, uh, that visor can make it really hard to see the contrast on the road and you'll miss bumps and rocks and things and it sucks to be surprised by those things. So I like my tinted visor on the highway. I don't like my tinted visor in the woods. You want to try to find a helmet that's ECE rated. If you can, ECE or Snell. There's a third rating called the DOT rating. That is the absolute bare minimum required for it to be a street legal helmet, at least in the US. But there's a lot of controversy around that DOT rating and it's not really regulated. And so that alone is not enough uh, to be sure that a helmet is safe. So I always advise you to go to the higher rating standards of the ECE or the Snell Foundation. Uh, this is an ECE helmet. This is an ECE helmet. This Scorpion AT950 is not an ECE helmet, but the AT960, which is coming out, is, which makes me think, 
One, this one was pretty damn good. And two, Scorpion's a brand I know and trust, so I will make an exception to that rule occasionally for a brand that I know and trust, but if it's some off-brand you've never heard of and it's not ECE rated, it means they didn't have it tested because they didn't think it would pass, and I would avoid that helmet at all costs, and that goes for street helmets as well. One other big feature to look for in ADV helmets is MIPS. That is an acronym, M-I-P-S, Multi-Impact Something System, I forget. But the types of impacts we get into when we're riding off-road are different than the impacts you experience when riding on the street. Hitting the smooth, flat pavement at 70 miles an hour and hitting a rocky surface with multiple angles and shapes at 30 miles an hour are very different types of impacts. And so that MIPS system mitigates some of that oblique twisting. It's supposed to reduce concussions in those slower speed rotational type impacts. And so in an off-road helmet, I highly recommend MIPS. And it's not some super expensive fancy feature. Literally a MIPS helmet is like $20 more than a regular helmet. So look for a helmet with MIPS if you can. I highly recommend it. Um, you can get a lot of helmets with that MIPS system and it can literally save your brain. So um, keep an eye out for that. Highly recommend recommend that in a off-road helmet. Oh, and closable vents, like here, you can see on the Scorpion, it's got a vent here that closes and opens. Sure are nice, same here on the climb, uh, if you plan on riding in the rain. Some of these helmets are more motocross style, and you can't close the vents, and it is possible for water to get in. So ones with adjustable, openable, and closable vents are things that I recommend. Another cool feature to look for in an ADV helmet is a removable peak. All three of these have peaks that come off very easily, so if you're gonna do a long day of highway riding with no off-road, you can take that peak off and not be fighting the buffeting and the extra noise all day. So that's another cool feature to look out for when you're shopping for ADV helmets. So what helmets do I recommend for newer or intermediate ADV riders? If you're just getting into the sport, you don't wanna spend a bunch of money, but you wanna make sure your brain is protected, where would I advise you start? And the answer to that is right here with the Bell MX-9. This was my first off-road adventure helmet. This is the MX-9 Adventure. Make sure you get the Adventure because the MX-9, the regular one, is a motocross helmet and it doesn't have a visor. It's available in MIPS. There's a ton of different colorways. It's a very comfortable helmet. I've worn it for hours and hours at a time, days at a time, really. It is a little noisy because it's not an expensive helmet, but it's ECE rated and will protect your brain. And I highly recommend that MX-9 if you're looking for an entry-level adventure helmet. This is the one I have the most personal experience with. And this MX-9 retails for about $230. So. You're not gonna spend much less than that and get a quality helmet. You see a helmet for $125, my guess is it's not gonna be ECE rated and you probably don't wanna trust your brain to it, but you do you. But the lowest end helmet I would recommend, probably personally, is this MX-9 Adventure. If you want the freedom and versatility of a modular ADV helmet, so the ability to flip it up, have a conversation, drink water, stop and get gas without taking your helmet off, whatever, and then flip it back down and get back to adventure riding. The Scorpion AT950 is a great choice. This is a very comfortable modular helmet. This may be my most comfortable ADV helmet that I have at the moment, and it's the one I like to wear on days when I'm out training and coaching because it is sure nice to be able to talk to someone. You're trying to give them feedback in the moment or whatever. You pull up next to them on your bike. It's sure nice to be able to flip that, that chin bar up be like, oh dude, you're doing a great job. Just make sure you watch your clutch control. Flip it back down and keep going. It's so nice to have that ability. And so um, that AT950 also has the sun visor that I showed you before. So it's a very versatile, useful helmet, very comfortable. I like that one a lot. It's a good price point. As I mentioned, it's not ECE rated, but I feel comfortable recommending this one from Scorpion because they're a good company with a great reputation. And I've been wearing this one personally for about a year. So the AT950 is about $275, or you can wait in spring of this year, so any time now, the AT960, the upgraded version is coming out and it is ECE rated and has all the features of this AT950. Or wait for the AT960 to come out and pick up an AT950 on clearance. That might be a good idea to save yourself even more money. That AT960 is going to be $300. A couple other entry level options that I would recommend checking out, let's call them honorable mentions are the Fly Racing Odyssey and Trekker. One is modular, one isn't. Those are about $200. And the AFX FX41, that's also about a $200 helmet. I don't have personal experience with either of those, but I know people who do that recommend them. They're all ECE rated and really good entry-level lids for your adventure riding 
shenanigans. Now, let's say you either have a little bit more money to spend on gear after, at the beginning because you know you're going to be doing a lot of adventure riding and you want to get the best helmet now instead of buying an entry-level one and then having to upgrade in a year or whatever, or you're looking for your second helmet, right? A um, couple recommendations for you. The first one here is the Climb Krios. I've been wearing this helmet for a year. This is the helmet I wore on the Washington BDR. I've spent a ton of time wearing this helmet. It's very comfortable. I feel confident in its safety abilities. It's, uh, it's really well made. It comes pin lock ready. It came with the uh, tinted visor. It's got really good venting, works great with goggles. It's an all around fantastic helmet. And uh, this one costs a little bit more. Creos is $550. And the Creos Pro, if you're looking for a super fancy helmet, is more like seven or $800. So it's a great helmet for the price. And if you know you're gonna wear it a lot over the five years that it lasts, because helmets only last five years, the Creos is a great way to go. Another helmet that I would recommend, depending on when you're watching this, is the brand new Scorpion XT 9000 Carbon. That is a non-modular, ADV helmet coming out from Scorpion this spring. It is February of 2023 right now. I expect to see it anytime. And when it arrives, I will of course link it in the description for you, but that is probably gonna be my primary helmet this year once they come out. I have a feeling I'm gonna spend a lot of time in that 189,000. I'm pretty excited about it. So check that out on Scorpion's website. I will of course link to every single helmet that I've mentioned in the description of this video. So please feel free to check those links out. And don't forget that I'm gonna do a series of videos on sort of explaining the basics of ADV and dual sport gear and giving you some recommendations. So I've got a gloves video coming up. I've got a jackets and pants video coming up and I've got a boots video coming up. So make sure that you're subscribed so you do not miss those if you're looking for future ADV or dual sport gear recommendations and advice. If you have questions about ADV helmets, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you have a good entry level or mid level helmet that you'd recommend, please leave that in the comments so people can benefit from your experience. And please consider subscribing to the channel because I am the dork in the road and I wanna be your internet riding buddy and I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. If you enjoyed the video, if you got some information out of it, please hit the like button. Thank you for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Uh, thank you. Excellent! Yay!